All right, in this video, let's talk about matrices. We're going to solve eigenvalues, eigenvectors, and find an inverse matrix. So let's get started. So we have A, which is equal to 1, 4, 2, 3. So let's get started then. All right, so 1 minus lambda, 4, 2, 3 minus lambda, and that is equal to 0. So 1 minus lambda, times 3 minus lambda minus 2 multiplied by 4 equals 2. So this is 3 minus lambda minus 3 lambda plus lambda squared minus 8 equals to 0. So simplifying this even further, we get, what is it? So it's lambda squared, 1 minus 3, it's minus 4 and 3 minus 8, that's minus 5. So this is equal to 0. So A is equal to 1, B is equal to minus 4, and C is equal to minus 5. So to find our lambda, minus B plus or minus B squared for AC divided by 2A. So minus B, that is 4, plus or minus b squared, that's 16, and then ac, so it's 1 times 5, that's 5, because that's a minus there, so this is plus 20. So, and then a is 1, so this is 2. So we get 1, so this is 4, plus or minus 36, divided by 2. So even further, so this is 4, plus or minus 6, divided by 2. What I like doing is in these exercises is to assign to lambda 1, the 1 with the negative. So it's 4 minus 6 divided by 2. So this is minus 2 divided by 2. That's minus 1. And for the other one, so we do the plus sign. So it's 4 plus 6 divided by 2, which is equal to 10 divided by 2. It's equal to 5. So now we have the eigenvalues. We have the first one that is equal to minus 1, and you have the second one that is equal to 5. So let's work on each of them separately. So for this one, minus 1, let me get this to the top. So 1 plus 1, 4, then 2, 4. So this is in our matrix. So this is 2, 4, 2, 4. So we can do line operations. So line one is the same thing as half of line one, and line two is line one minus line two. So what we get here is one, two, zero, zero. So this with the vectors is equal to zero. So x one, because it's this one times this one plus this one times this one. So let me get the dots out of here. So it's x1 plus 2x2 two two equals 0. So when you get the other one to the other side, we get x1 equals to minus 2x2. Two two. So now for the vectors. And initially, this was kind of confusing to me, and the way for me to solve this is by thinking it with a multiplier. Let me explain. So Let's say you don't have, which is the case, we don't have anything here to multiply by x1, but we have something that is multiplying by x2. So what this means is, if you say that x2 is 1, right, so automatically x1 is a result of the math that you do here, so it's minus 2. Get what I mean? So you are assigning one value here, and because it's being multiplied by some number here, now x1 is being affected by the operation. So this gives you your first vector. So let's move on to the next one. So now let's work on eigenvalue 2. So lambda 2 is equal to 5. All we're doing is substituting in A. So when it's 1 minus lambda, in our specific case is 1 minus 5. And then this one is 4, this one is 2, and this one is 3 minus 5. So our expression results in, so this is minus 4, this is 4, 2, 3 minus 5, that's minus 2. 
So again, line operations. So line one is the same thing as having minus one fourth line one, and line two is the same thing as having one half line two. So let's keep going. So this is one minus one, one minus one. So line two is the same thing as having line one minus line two. So let's keep going. So we have one minus one, zero, zero. So now we have x1 and x2, so we can get the result. So x1 minus x2 is equal to zero. So this is the same thing as saying x1 is equal to x2. So our resulting v2 vector, since one is equal to the other, let's call it one, one for both, okay? So our diagonal, it's the eigenvalues. The first one was minus one, zero, and then this term is zero, and the last one that we have is five. So this is our diagonal. Our p, it's with the vectors. So the first vector was minus two, one. Our second vector, which is the one that we have here, is one, one. And now if we want to find the inverse, so all we got to do is determinant of a, just to simplify our math a little bit. So it's one times three minus four times two. So this is three minus eight. So it says minus five. And now we have a, which is equal to one, four, two, three. And what we do here to find the matrix is you change this one to this one. So it's three, one, and then add negative sign to both of these ones. So it's minus two, minus four. So it's this one and times one divided by the determinant that we found, which is minus five. So the resulting inverse matrix, our P minus one, is equal to minus three divided by five, minus four, but we have a minus there as well, so this becomes positive, and then minus with minus, that's positive, so it's two-fifths, and the other one is minus one divided by five. This is our resulting inverse matrix. Let's do another one. So let's say A now is equal to one, eight, three, and three. This is our initial matrix. So to find the eigenvalues, same as before, one minus lambda, eight, three, three minus lambda. Determinant equals to zero. So one minus lambda times three minus lambda minus eight times three equals to zero. So this is three, minus lambda minus three lambda plus lambda squared minus 24 equal to zero. So lambda squared minus four lambda, three minus 24, that's minus 21 equal to zero. So A equals to one, B equals to minus four, and C equals to minus 21. So lambda is equal to minus b plus or minus b squared for a c divided by 2a. So minus b, that is minus 4, but because it's negative, it's 4, plus or minus, minus 4 squared power, that's 16, 21 times 4, that's 4, 84. So 16, so we have minus n minus, so this is four plus or minus 16 plus 84 divided by two. So this is the same thing as saying we have this first one, 16 plus 84, that's 100, and the square root of 100 is 10. Again, for the eigenvalues, the first one, I start with a negative, so it's four minus 10 divided by two. So this is four minus 10, that's minus six divided by two, which is minus three. And for the second one, we do the positive. So four plus 10 divided by two. So four plus 10, that's 14 divided by two, that is seven. So these are our eigenvalues. Lambda one is equal to minus three, and lambda two is equal to seven. Let's keep going. So to find the eigenvectors, we start with the first one. So this one is equal to minus three. We're going to substitute it back into a. So one minus minus three, that's one plus three. 
and then we have eight, leave it unchanged, same thing for this guy, and then it's three minus minus three, so three plus three. So this is our substitution. So what's this? So this is one, three, that's four, eight, three, and six. Now let's keep simplifying the expression a bit. So line one is the same thing as having one fourth line one, and line two, same thing as having one third line two. So this is one, two, one, two. So line two is line one minus line two. So we get that this is one, two, and this is zero, zero. And now multiplying it by x1 and x2, we get that x1 minus 2x2 is equal to zero. Same thing saying that x1 is equal to 2x2. Again, as before, so our vector one, you take a value because this one is a constant that is multiplying outside. So you just assign it a value and find out what the value that you need to put here. So this is because this is one, one times two, it's two. So this value is two. So this is our first vector. Our second vector, so lambda two is equal to seven. So again, one minus seven, eight, three, three minus seven, so minus six, eight, three, minus four. We simplify both terms. So L1 is minus half L1 and line two, it's L1 minus L2. So this is three, four, minus four, zero, zero. So our second one is 3x1 minus 4x2 equals to zero, or same thing, or same thing as saying 3x1 equals to 4x2. So x1 is equal to 4 thirds of x2. So v2 is equal to, you assign a value to x2, one, and x1 is being affected directly by this math. So x1 is equal to 4 thirds. So A is equal to 1, 8, 3, 3. Our diagonal is made of the eigenvalues and the other ones are zero. So it's minus three and zero. This is our diagonal. Our P is made up of the vectors going down. So the first one we found was two, one. And the second one that we just found is four divided by three and one. So we are now asked to find the inverse matrix. And the first step is finding out if the determinant is different than zero. It can be positive, it can be negative, it just can't be zero. So the determinant of A is equal to, so it's this one times this one minus this one times this one. So one times three minus three times eight. So it's three minus 24, which is equal to minus 21. Now our inverse matrix, you start with A, you invert these two and get a negative sign in these two. So it's three, one, minus three, minus eight, and then multiply by one divided by the determinant that we have just found. So this is how you find it. So the result is three divided minus 21, and then minus minus is plus, so it's eight divided by 21, and then it's minus minus with these two guys. So it's three divided by 21. And then the other ones, it's one divided by minus 21, which is minus one divided by 21. So you can leave the result like this, or you can even further simplify it because we see that we have three here and 21. So you can have it like this. So it's minus one divided by seven, eight divided by 21, one divided by seven, and minus one divided by 21. This is your inverse matrix.